Let's take a look at surface area and volume for 3D figures. For a prism, we have surface area is 2B plus PH. And for volume, we have big B plus H. So the capital B, I call big B, is the area of the base. So in that case, we would need to figure out the area of whatever shape the base is. So it could be a square, could be a rectangle. In this case, it's a hexagon. So they mean to find the area of the base versus the perimeter of the base, which is listed as our next variable right here, is if you find the length of the sides of the base, so for instance on this hexagon, and then you would have to add them up to get the perimeter of the base. And then the height, most of us are familiar with height being just the regular side of the figure that's vertically going from the top to the bottom. But be careful because some shapes get turned on their side and the height can look like it's actually the base. For a cylinder, we have surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So we could just make a note that the height is that vertical distance, but just be careful if they turn it on its side. And then the radius of the circular side just goes halfway across the circle, not all the way across. That would be the diameter. For a pyramid, we have the surface area is that big B again, so area of the base. I'm going to highlight it again. And perimeter of the base, so let's highlight that one, would be if we find the length of each side and add them all up. That would be the perimeter of the base. And we have a new variable, the slant height. So notice the slant height is like a, ca a cursive lowercase l. And that is the length of the slanted side. But the volume of a pyramid is area of the base times the height, and then you take a third of that. And so notice it needs the true height of the pyramid, and the true height of the pyramid goes straight down from the top to the bottom of the figure. And so that's the height versus the slant height is on the slanted side of the figure, which kind of makes sense with how it's named. So a cone is the next figure. The surface area of a cone is pi r squared, which makes sense because that is the area of the circular base of a cone, is the pi r squared, plus pi r l. So notice you have slant height again. So you have to figure out the slanted side of the cone if it's not already given to you. And then the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared times the height. So again, keep in mind the height is different than the slant height. The height goes straight down from the top to the bottom vertically. And for a sphere, we have surface area is 4 pi r squared and volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the main thing is your radius. So just make sure you remember the radius goes halfway across the figure versus the diameter will go all the way across the figure. And so if they give you the diameter, you'd want to divide that by 2 to figure out your radius. So let's look at a few examples. We're going to find the surface area and volume of the following figures and be sure to include units with our answer. So let's take a look at the first one here. We have a shape of a cylinder given in number 1. So surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. It's good to refer to your formula sheet and write these down as you practice them so that you start to memorize the formulas as you're practicing. And let's see what we're given. We have a radius of 8 and a height of 12. So we have everything we need to fill in our formula. So let's put in 2 pi times 8 squared plus 2 pi times 8 times 12. So what I like to do is find my answer two ways. I like to find it in terms of pi and then also as a decimal because they could give it to you either way on an exam. So 2 pi times 8 squared. 8 squared is 64, and 64 times 2 would give me 128. So I'm going to put 128 pi for the first one. And then 8 times 12 would give me 96, and 96 times 2 would be 198. And then when I add these two together, I would get 320 pi for my surface area. And let's put in our units, which are centimeters squared, because surface area is always a square 
measurement. And then to get it in terms of a decimal, let's put in the pi with our 320 and multiply them together. So 320 pi would be 1,005.3. Square centimeters. Let me make the five look a little more like a five. Okay, so that's it for the surface area of our cylinder. Now let's find the volume of the cylinder. So volume for a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. And we're already given the radius and the height, so we can go ahead and fill in that we have pi times the radius squared, which is eight squared, times the height, which is 12. And then again, I like to find out what is that value without typing in pi so that I can leave my answer in terms of pi is what they call it. So just type everything in except for pi and we get 768 and just leave pi as part of the answer. And then it will be cubic centimeters. And then to put pi back in the answer for volume, it's easy because you're just multiplying everything together. And so you can just tack it on the end and get 2,412.7 cubic centimeters for the decimal version of the volume. All right, so that's it for our cylinder surface area and volume. For number two, we're given a cone. So let's find the surface area and volume of a cone. So if needed, of course, refer to your formula sheet. The cone surface area formula is pi r squared plus pi r l. And we want to remember l is that slant height, not the height that's vertical. So pi r squared plus pi r l. Let's write that down. Pi r squared plus pi r l. So it looks like we are given the radius right here where they're pointing to half of the end of the circle there, the end of our cone. So pi times 12 squared plus pi times 12 times. And we are not given the slant height, so we're gonna need to figure out what it is. We do have the true height and we have the radius and the slant height is right here on the side of our cone. And so we have enough information to figure it out with the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that is when you have two sides of a right triangle, but you need the third side. So we're gonna use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where 12 is gonna be my a, so 12 squared, 32 is gonna be my b, so 32 squared equals c squared, which is technically my l in this case. So I'm just gonna replace it. So let's come over to our calculator and do some calculating. So 12 squared plus 32 squared is 1,168, but that's equal to the slant height squared, so we need to take the square root of that number. No problem, so square root of 1,168 is 34.2. We're just gonna round to the nearest tenth on this. So let's plug that in now for this last value we need for our formula. And so, Let's work on getting this in terms of pi. So it takes a little more work finding surface area because you're adding, you can't just type it all in without pi and then add it to the end. You gotta do these separately. So 12 squared is 144. So that gives me 144 pi. And then 12 times 34.2 is 410.4 pi. And then we can add them up. So we get 554.4 pi, and we have square centimeters for surface area. So then at the end, when you have your final number, you can then type that in together. So 554.4 pi would be our decimal. So 1,741.7 square centimeters for our surface area of the cone. So that just took a little extra work because we had to figure out the slant height, but you've got to do the work or you would get the wrong answer. So that's no good. The volume of a cone, I always remember because it's a third of a cylinder. So I always would visualize that there are always three cones that make up any cylinder. And so I just need one third pi r squared times the height, which is the volume of a cylinder formula but a third of that. And so 
Didn't mean to delete that. So let's find one third pi times the radius, which was given as 12. And then the height was given as 32 because that goes straight down the middle. Like I said earlier, be careful because the cone is laying on its side. So the height is still given. It's just laying horizontally at the moment. You got to try to turn your paper or visualize that that would be the height on its side. So let's calculate everything without pi. So I'm going to clear this out and start typing 1 third 12 squared times 32. And I get 1,536 Q oh, pi. We got to put pi in there. Pi cubic centimeters. But then to put it in terms of pi, just put it at the end because you're multiplying everything together with the volume. So it's a little easier than surface area to get the decimal. So 4,825.5 cubic centimeters for the volume. And I just put the 12 right next to the 1 third. But notice if I put a time symbol in there, it's still the same thing. The calculator knew what I was doing to put them next to each other. All right, so for number three, we're given a cone. I mean, not a cone. We just had a cone. We're given a sphere. So let's find the surface area and the volume of our sphere. So the surface area of a sphere is four times the area of a circle. So four pi r squared. So I look over here and I am given this 50 centimeters, but it's pointing to the pink line that goes all the way across the circle, which is the diameter. And I just want the radius. So the radius would be half of the 50. In other words, 25 centimeters. So just be careful that you don't use the 50. We only need the 25. And then I'm gonna plug that in. So type in everything except pi, which is not a whole lot in this case. So four times 25 squared is 2,500 pi. And then it's square centimeters for our surface area. Area is always squared and volume is always cubed. And then put in the pi, because we were just multiplying all that together, it doesn't hurt anything to put that at the end. So 7,853.98. So in this rare instance, I'm going to round up to the next whole number since it would bring it up to a 4. All right, so that's it for surface area of our sphere. Let's find the volume. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Remember, write the formula until you at least have it memorized or just write it every time to be on the safe side. So 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed, which you already figured out was 25. Then just type it in your calculator without pi. So carefully type 4 thirds times 25 cubed, and I get 20,833.3 repeating. So 20,833.3 repeating. Pi is still not in there, so we got to put that as our answer. Cubic centimeters. Or then put the pi at the end, and we get 65,449.8. But don't put pi because now you've included it, so you wouldn't want to write that twice. So that is the volume of our sphere, and those are three good examples of surface area and volume of 3D figures.